This is Robert Langdon. The suspect called him. I teach symbology. Did this person say what he wants? He wants me to locate an ancient portal buried within the Capitol. Did that mean something to you? Didn't until I saw that. Ashley, what a thrilling series. It's about a lot of things. It's about the CIA. It's about crime. It's about personal relationships. But to me, it's about obsession. Robert Langdon is an obsessive person. Um, he has to be to ever have gotten into the line of work he's in. Tell me if you agree with that and and what you know about him in your own mind. That's a really, I think that's an interesting observation. I, I think that's true. I think he he is obsessed and, and I think most of the characters or definitely, you know what, there's like the um, the antagonist we made in the in the pilot, Malak. I did always think of Robert Langdon and Malak as two sides of the same coin. They are both obsessed, but in different ways. And and that so we in turn with Robert Langdon, his obsession is it's interesting. He's got like a, an, a, an obsession towards the negative. He's obsessed with believing that myth isn't real. He actually and and anyone who proposes the idea that it might be real. He will shut down. Yeah. And, and when you, and that reveals something about him. It, it reveals a lack of openness that actually is more about him personally than it is about anything that he's aware of. So I think that's a very, that's a yeah. really good idea. I think it's also about, he doesn't want to entertain this idea that everything he's done is for nothing, I suppose as well. Yeah. Well, I think like the way I thought about him was that, you know, my, or my way in was that he's a guy that knows so much. He's so deeply intelligent and that in most people that frees them. And for him, it traps, traps him because wow. some, yeah, that something happens, something happened, which we explore a little in the pilot. And then as the series progresses, something happened to him when he was younger that he can't understand. And it's given him this this love of knowledge, this pursuit of knowledge to try to understand. But at, at every point, he has found no reason to understand the unknown and which has only made him believe in it less and be then believe in himself less. And there's one thing for that to be about myth and about uh, religion. It's another thing or faith. It's another thing for that. To, that then what I think the Langdon that we see, especially the younger Langdon, is that it then means that he conflates that idea with not being able to trust feelings like trust and love. And I think that's an interesting idea. So I, I, obsession is a, it's an interesting thing. So I, it's I, like someone who's obsessed with numbers or ancestry, or it's something they think they can conquer somehow. Yes. Yeah. That, 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 they're, that actually stops them from seeing the woods from the trees. And I think yes. that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Such an interesting character. Oh my goodness. Uh, and of course, you, you, there's a lot of sci-fi elements naturally, but um, the effects I found to be really good. For instance, when you're trapped uh, underground in um, a special place, shall we say, yeah. it looks so real, like you're being crushed by the walls. Yeah, when Dan Trachtenberg, our director, really wanted to, like he, he, he's so, he, he's a love of, he has such a love of cinema. And he really wanted to do things as practical as possible. Yeah. And I, that's why it looks real. It, it, like, because that was a practical wall that we have people pushing against. No. So there is this idea that it can crush you. And I think, like, and I think we try to do that as, much, as often as possible. We try to make of, of ancient puzzles and ancient architecture. So like that we, we try to make as many things as possible practical. And yeah. sometimes yeah. that's impossible. And, and sometimes that, you know. You know, well, that, that was great. And so many of, of them were. Um, uh, the suspense is, is really heightened in it because he's working on, uh, he's in a race to solve the puzzle before any number of, of uh, obstacles and um, antagonists come out, the CIA, the weird branch of the Masons, um, you know, and to save Peter, there's so much tension and it's handled so well that it's balanced and believable, which I found remarkable. Mm -hmm. So tell me about, you know, creating that balance as, as the main actor. I will say that the burden of most of that is on the writing. And then that like, I think for, 
for Robert Langdon, he's put in a position where, yeah, he's conflicted himself about what's going on, but what pushes him through is that his mentor, life and death for his mentor, and he has one option. He has to keep going. There isn't, he doesn't have time to stop and question. So, and then we, we just see that there are all of these different factors trying to intercede. And, and, and that just re- raises the stakes and confuses him more and makes it even harder for him. That's the process of doing it, at, the, at least. And yeah. Cool. That's, that's great. And of course, dead giveaway. There was Union Station. You shot in Toronto. Hooray. <laughs> <laughs> so did, was that during the pandemic? The, that was during the pandemic. Yeah, we shot the pilot in October, November last year. And um, yeah, that was actually a very interesting day because we weren't allowed many people in there. Obviously, like there were, you know, everything was highly Public space, yes. Public space, exactly. And so we're lucky that we were able to be in there, but we ended up having a very, like, uh, uh, very reduced crew. Uh, most people waiting outside and we could only have, like, I think it was the number was 10 people or so in that space. And uh, it, it, it actually, I think, added to the intimacy because it's the scene where we, Catherine and Langdon, finally meet and there's, there's a lot there. There's a lot going on between. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, did it did it change the way the shoot was done? That scene aside, in terms of the people that you were with and close physically to. Yeah, well, that was you know the uh, one we were just so lucky. Um, we didn't think we would be able to go back to work last year. We thought we'd have to wait until this year. Like, but the unions. Um, did, a, it did quite an incredible job of putting together these protocols so that we could go back to work safely. And we're lucky that the governments let us, like it wasn't lost on us that we were suddenly allowed to be around people, like how healthy that is. Like we were, we, we, we knew how fortunate we were to be able to work. Um, and then the restrictions were like, they were, the, the protocols and restrictions were substantial and it was a, a pretty incredible uh, feat and and I'm and I, I mean I think there's something about film crews that I'm in awe of in general that they're constantly taking on uh, you know new complications and the COVID protocols just ended up being another complication that they just adopted and a film crew is just it's made to be adaptable it's a circus of sorts and and we're made to, to adapt and uh, and they did it seamlessly it was it's sort of remarkable. Did you know much about the Masons before? And if you research, tell me what you found. Yeah, you know, I, I knew very little. Only what I think most people would know is this sort of very uh, unnuanced idea that they're some kind of secret society. And upon researching, I found that, like anything, when the more the more you know the more you understand that it's more complicated than you think. And, and I found that like, that's what struck me first is like that the Masons aren't any one thing. There's a lot of types of Masons, but I think interestingly, the symbol of what the Masons have become in normal society are not true to what the Masons are, that the Masons are essentially just like, like I, I, they're essentially just a, a group of people, most mostly men. Um, there are some orders that, that that allow women, and obviously that's problematic. But it's it's an order that essentially gets together and likes to talk about ideas. The, the one thing that struck me more than anything was that you it, it it you had to be religious. They just didn't. They just to become a mason. They just don't care what religion you're you you believe in. Wow. Most of the Masons, uh, like most of the Masonic uh, orders are, exist in um, Christian-led countries. So we think it's Christian-based, but but actually all they say is that you just have to believe in a creator spirit. And then they actually, they actually don't mind what that is. And you're actually not allowed to debate which religion is right in a Masonic house. So if you're an atheist, you can't become a Mason. But if you believe in a creator God, you, you, you can. And I, and I thought that was, that was actually like, a, like in terms of trying to find more unity in the world, that's not a bad, like that's an interesting idea. 
it seems like a modern idea too. And I mean, I think Black Creek Piner Village here, they have a Mason uh, building, you know, dating back a couple hundred years. It's just fascinating. Well, thank you so much, Ashley. So thank nice you. to speak with you. And we'll see you next time. Love that. Thank you very thank much. You. This is Robert Langdon. The suspect called him. I teach symbology. Did this person say what he wants? He wants me to locate an ancient portal buried within the capital. Did that mean something to you? It didn't until I saw that. It's your dad. That had his ring. So he was going on. The people who took him want me to find a piece of a very old puzzle. Rubbing your mouth? Like a runic variation. Smart people. It's upside down. I have something. Dad said that its secrecy was more valuable than his life. I'm coming with you. One veil is lifted, only to reveal another. You were told to do it alone. He has my father. He has a literal assassin. And that's, that's what it's going to take to get me to stop. I want to know how far Robert Langdon has gotten. It's a cipher for all who seek must also fall. Yeah, I'm more of a Sudoku guy. I can't stop. It's just begun.